In the last video, we built a proximity sensor, which was quite an interesting project by itself and was also fun learning how infrared radiation can be used. In this video, we'll put this circuit to use and make a line following bot and also solve some of the difficulties we might face during the build. Unlike other hundreds of videos online, we are actually going to understand why all these bots are built the way they are. So buckle up, this is going to be an in-depth tutorial and feel free to use the timestamp in the description to jump to any favorite part of the video. Before we move on any further, make sure you watch the last video on building the proximity sensor. If not, pause the video right away and watch the video first. The link for the video will be in the description. Now let's start with some bits and pieces of physics. Light Light is a complicated subject in physics. To make it easier, we'll just stick on to our pal Maxwell and consider light as electromagnetic waves. These waves consist of multiple wavelengths and get observed and transmitted by the surface around us. The one we are interested in is infrared region from 700 nanometer to 1 millimeter. Because the line follower board uses IR to detect the black line. Interesting, right? How something invisible can be used to detect color? This is something to do with the absorption and transmission of the electromagnetic waves. When the infrared light strikes a black surface, almost all the light is observed. And when it hits a white surface, almost all of the wave is reflected. And with other colors, the value of absorption and transmission may vary. Now when we apply this to the circuit we built in the last video, we can see that the receiver receives less IR when it's black and more IR when it's white. With this information, we can adjust the sensitivity of the IR such that the comparator outputs high when it's black and outputs low when it's white. Currently the circuit is doing exactly the opposite. Let's do some modification first. Just swap the connection of pin 3 and pin 2 and build another proximity sensor using the second op amp in the IC. That said, it is time to uncover the mystery why they used large stroke width for the line where they are technically just rectangles. Reason for this is, the line should be able to block the IR light so that the bot can detect the line. So how does the bot be in control? When the bot is not on the line, the wheel starts spinning, thus making the bot move forward. The adjacent motor to the sensor is stopped and the other one continues to move. This gives turn to the bot. By doing this back and forth, the bot aligns itself with the line. As we now know the physics, we can work on the electronics for this bot. For the mechanical movement, we are going to use this geared motors because this gives optimal speed to control and optimal torque to pull the bot. We can't just hook up the wires directly to the motor because it uses large current which can fry out the sensors. To solve this, we'll use a L293D, a motor driver IC. This has 16 pins. Since it is handling a large current, it has 4 grounds which act as heat sink to reduce the heat produced by the IC and 4 inputs to control 2 motors in both the directions. Now let's build a circuit to learn more about the IC. Connect pin 4, 5, 13, 12 to ground and pin 16 to 5 volt. This sets up the power for the IC. Now connect the pin 8 to 5 volt or an external power supply which can be up to 36 volt. Since we are using a small one, 5 volt should be more than enough to drive the motor. So let's just connect the pin 8 to 5 volts. Pin 3, 6 is the pin out for the first motor and pin 11 and 14 is for the second motor. To control this, pin 2 and 7 and pin 10 and 15 is used. Pin 1 and 9 are the enable pin which can disable the current to the motor. For more detail, you can check the data sheet of the L293D. Now we can control the rotation of the motor by pin 2 and 7. If the pin 2 is high and pin 7 is low, the motor turns anti-clockwise. If pin 2 is low and pin 7 is high, the motor turns clockwise. We can stop the motor either by pin 9 or pin 1 or by making pin 2 and 7 have the same input. In this video, we'll be going with the second approach. As we went to all the theory part, now let's just dive into the interesting part. Let's start the bell.
So if you guys have any doubts or idea for the future project, you can comment below. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. You can also support this channel by sharing the content with someone who is interested and by buying the components from the link in the description by which it won't add any additional charges rather it would say the website who recommended you and hence supporting the channel. So that's it for the video. You can watch other interesting videos from the link in the screen. As always, see you guys later.